Hello, everybody, and welcome to Third Rail Talk, Minnesota Real News Citizen Media. On today's podcast, I'm going to introduce you to someone from Saudi Arabia. I recently was commenting on one of the retweets that Laura Loomer, back in the day when she was still on Twitter, as you know, she was banned for life by a corporation that really doesn't understand or does not want to understand free speech. And that's a whole different subject matter in and of itself. But Laura had retweeted something from our Twitter account on Third Rail Talk. And one of the men who was commenting um, under that retweet was, uh, it struck me as very interesting. His name is Abdul and he's from Saudi Arabia. But the comments he was making were pretty interesting. I would say they were completely in line with what um, I would make as a comment and they had to do with Islam. So naturally, when you have somebody from Saudi Arabia making comments about Islam that seems so counterproductive or counterintuitive to what uh, we would think of uh, someone coming from Saudi Arabia, I reached out to him and I began to communicate with him. He explained that he is a secular Muslim and what he really wants is for America to stay free and to remain free and to keep Sharia out of the United States. So I thought Abdul might be willing to come on the podcast and Here he is. Today, he is my guest. I'll have to ask for your patience and gracious understanding because for the first part of the interview, there was some technical issues and an echo on his end. So if he can survive that, then he gets better for the second half without any echo. And I guarantee you there will be no echo in future recordings. Abdul, how are you? You're plugging in from uh, Saudi Arabia. Thanks for agreeing to come on to the show. Hi, George. Yes. My name is Abdul Sakar. I'm in Saudi right now. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating. Uh, you can just plug in like this from the other side of the world and uh, be part of this uh, conversation. So tell us a little bit um, about yourself. Uh, from what I understand, you have been to the United States. Uh, you studied here. Is that right? So... Uh, I, my first time uh, going to the U.S. was late is I wandered for a, a training camp uh, in L.A., San Francisco. I was a student back then. And then uh, sometime in the early 90s, I went back to Washington, D.C. I spent almost four years there. Uh, I went to school, American University. And then I worked, I worked with it also uh, in a technology company in, in Washington, D.C. I went back to Saudi, but after that, I kept going to the U.S. almost every year for a few weeks, either as a business or as a a tourist. So tell us a little bit about your experience. Did you have a good experience? Was it a cultural uh, shock, change, or maybe not at all? Yeah. So basically, on a personal level, my first few weeks or months in the U.S. was, was not short of, of a cultural shock, the, the kind of uh, of the society compared to what, what we had in, in Saudi is completely different. Then I started to understand the different uh, different kind of, of uh, political, uh, social uh, streams in the U.S., uh, from communism to liberal to conservatism. So then I went to school. In, in Washington, D.C., and I started studying all kinds of religions, like uh, um, Asian religions, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism. Then I went and I studied also uh, uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism. I understood the, the heritage that uh, Judaism have on, on Christianity and the importance of the two religions together. Then this, this kind of experience enlightened myself because whatever we, we, we study in the public school in, in Saudi is basically there is one view of life that Islam is the ultimate truth and everything else is, is just uh, corrupted as religion. Well, this is all very interesting. So basically, people grow up in Saudi Arabia believing that Islam is the best and only true religion and... Uh, Every other religion is corrupted by man. Tell me a little bit about education. How does that 
impact education. In other words, people growing up in Saudi Arabia and going to school, do they believe, uh, do they teach uh, evolution in the school system anywhere, whether it's uh, primary school or high school or college, or do people believe uh, basically are being taught as far as the origins of the world, they're being taught uh, on a different Islamic paradigm? Oh my God, it is all, all creationism. Nobody even dares to teach uh, evolution in Saudi. Not in the public schools, not in college, universities, all of them, they don't touch this subject. Nobody speaks about Darwin. You, you, can't, you can't even find the, the, the slightest mention of, of, of uh, evolution in, in Saudi. I find this fascinating. Perhaps uh, another podcast could be dedicated entirely to this whole subject of how education functions in Islamic countries like Saudi Arabia. But, you know, I don't know you um, at all. We just met on Twitter or made contact on Twitter. And uh, I don't know entirely your background, but uh, your comments made me feel like you understand um, my perspective and our perspective here in the United States as far as Sharia is concerned, as far as the danger of political Islam. Um, it sounds like you've had a good, uh, you had an opportunity to have a good look at the different uh, religious teachings, uh, Christianity, Judaism, and others, and you've developed a pretty tolerant view, uh, which is probably uncommon, or at least we think it's uncommon for someone coming from a country like Saudi Arabia. If you take the Old Testament or the New Testament of the Quran, you will find many verses that are prob problematic. And I believe not only Quran, but all religions should be taken the good moral values of religion should be held very high but certain verses the problematic ones were, were were because of certain historical events that should be kept at that level we should not bring them to our daily lives we should keep keep these problematic verses for this historical period we should not we should not bring them forward to our current life okay so basically you have adopted this is what you call this is why you call yourself a secular muslim because you have developed this uh, conviction and this uh understanding of islam that you should keep all the verses that are problematic as you could call them uh that have to do with violence that have to do with sharia you should keep all this back in time it was back for the day whenever it was given and people did this in the past but today and now you only rely on Islam as a guide for what's good, and all the bad stuff, so to say, stays in the past. You should take Sharia, and you, 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 you are free to implement Sharia in your house. You go to a mosque, you practice whatever you want. But it has no place in society. It has no place in the economic system. It has no place in the political system. And every person today who claims that Sharia is the solution or Islam is the solution is basically want to bring Sharia to political system, to economy, to society, which is completely wrong. All right. I'm not going to go into detail and uh, ask you more about what does it mean exactly to practice Sharia at home and at the mosque, but not in society. We're not going to break it down to that de level of detail right now. Maybe we can do this at another podcast, but uh, uh, let's just talk a little bit more about that. My the original comments that you made on Twitter were basically, if I can summarize, like America, stay away from Sharia. Do not allow Sharia. Um, you are warning America about not to lose its liberties and not to lose its freedom. But now we have organizations like the Council of American Islamic Relations or CARE, especially here in Minnesota, that are so deeply entrenched into the, have become so entrenched into the political system and the media. They conduct these sensitivity trainings and all sorts of influence that is being exercised on the political thought, on the public um, arena. And uh, these organizations, organizations like CARE, are 
basically extensions of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a terrorist organization, including designated such by the government of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so when I was in the U.S. in the mid-90s, I, I witnessed the, uh, the formation of care in Baghdad. And I know, I've met Nihad Awad personally back then. He, he came to our neighborhood mosque and he was preaching there. Uh, almost every single Islamic non-profit organization in the U.S. Is, is actually has its root in the Muslim Brotherhood. I've met them all. I've met uh, the Islamic Association of Northern America, Ayana. I've met CARE people. I've met, I've, I went to almost every campus they had in the U.S. So all of them, they practice an Islamic teaching they call Tukia. Tukia basically, you don't confess your real attention to non-Muslims. So you work in a very uh, menace way and, and try to build a nice space in front of infidels or non-Muslims and then try your best to invent Sharia on the long run. Well, this is very interesting. I think most people here in the United States have heard about takia, as we have probably Americanized the Arabic word, which you just enlightened us. It's actually tukia. Tukia, yes. You don't confess your true intention to non-Muslims. Uh, I believe that Muslim Brotherhood is the most evil organization ever existed and, and, and the world, probably from my perspective, they are so evil. And this is, has brought a lot of wrath, a lot of anger from those guys against Mohammed bin Salman, because he's the one behind that move. And uh, he's been targeted heavily by their godfather, which is the, the ruler of, of Turkey, Erdogan. That's, that's, if, if you look at, at the history of Muslim Brotherhood, Osama bin Laden, and his mentor, uh, Abdul Wahri, both of them uh, came out of the Muslim Brotherhood School. And I believe every single terrorist organization that we have today, you name it, is it ISIS, Daesh, Nusra, every single of one of them, they have their doctrine, their teachings come up out of Muslim Brotherhood. The beautiful face you see in CARE in the US, Ayana, of like five or six or 10 a non-profit organization in the U.S., are, are, all of them are Muslim Brotherhood. And I believe as a Saudi, I'm fed up with such extremism. I've lived in the U.S., I've lived, I've lived in, the, in the West. There are so many people are fed up with this nonsense. We want to live like the U.S. We don't want to live like Taliban or ISIS. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm doing this... Uh... Because I believe that little by little, if everyone does their part, we can actually change the course of things. It's not going in a good direction right now. We have people like Ilhan Omar, who is going to uh, U.S. Congress trying to change rules that have to do with head coverings. And this lady is now trying to change a rule that has been in place in Congress for 180 years that members of Congress can't cover their heads. Now she wants to change that because she wants to be covered because she's a Muslim. So we have organizations like CARE and politicians like Ilhan Omar who basically are trying to bring uh, Islamic, uh, Muslim Islamic um, attire, clothing and style of clothing to our public square and make it accepted as an expression of human right, while at the same time, countries like Saudi Arabia are coming out of that same type of bondage, and um, women now can drive in Saudi Arabia. That has been a big change, but also women in, in other countries are burning their burqas and basically are saying, stop, enough of this foolishness. We want to live like a normal people. Even in Saudi for the last few years, women don't have to wear their uh, my wife don't have to. Once we travel outside Saudi, she doesn't. She wears very Western clothes. She wears a bikini sometimes. So yes, people like me who don't take uh, religion literally believe that God wants from us very simple things, 
want to be nice humans. Ten Commandments are good enough for every single human. Not, not more, not less. Well, I find it fascinating because actually um, here in the United States, people who have awakened to the threat of Islam and Sharia and an implementation of these ideologies, we listen to all kinds of voices, but not the voices of ordinary people. And frankly, this is what um, the design and the ideas behind a citizen media like uh, Third Rail Talk. It's to have a platform for ordinary people, whoever they may be, right here in the U.S., and as well as people like yourself from the other side of the world or a culture or a country that's very different. I want people to understand that we can change this. Things can be turned around because we have people like yourself, voices like yours, that are saying what we're saying right here and trying to bring this message to our leaders, to people in the media, law enforcement and other institutions to realize what fraud these organizations are, like CARE and Muslim American Society and all kinds of other nonprofits and extensions of the Muslim Brotherhood, that they are a problem and they need to be managed. They need to be shut down. I want to thank you and for people like you who are standing up for those liberals, naive liberals who believe that uh, terrorists like CARE and IANA have a place in the U.S. They need to, to, to wake up and smell the coffee because those guys are going to turn the U.S. into another Afghanistan, another Taliban. They need to stop supporting Muslim Brotherhood. They don't know what they are supporting. Obama has made a big mistake back then when he supported them and, and the Arab Spring. Abdul, I want to thank you for agreeing to come on um, our podcast, Third Rail Talk. And I look forward to reconnecting again with you and basically allowing you to share your thoughts and ideas and perspectives on this citizen media platform. The whole purpose for a platform like this is to allow ordinary people to share their thoughts and their perspectives because we're so sick and tired of the corporate big media corrupted by government, corporate money and interests, and all sorts of pro-Sharia politics. It's choking the life out of us and we're fed up with it. So that's the whole reason why Third Rail Talk exists. And I want to encourage all of you to sign up for our Patreon. Also to sign up for our newsletter on our website, thirdrailtalk.com stay uh, to stay connected uh, because our social media accounts may be shut down at any given point so that's a good way for us to stay in touch thank you so much sir look forward to speaking to you again thank you sir thank you yep. take care bye-bye have a nice day bye-bye